So good morning. We are first item on my agenda is membership dues and deadlines. So this is a Marlena has to help me with this because it's a two parter. First and foremost, make sure you get your dues paid by January 31st if you haven't done so already. And I know a lot of uh, states use different methods to pay, whether it's by credit card on your own or um, other states will send one big check. Does everybody know how their state has handled that in the past? In case there's new folks on here that don't know. Wonderful. Then the other, so the payment part, and then I have to tell you, maybe I just got it this morning. I got an email from the, uh, the National Association that said that my dues were received as well. Does anybody need information about where their state's at? I know we helped Nicole in Utah make sure that she, their check was received. Does anybody need us to follow up on that or you all know where you sit? I have a quick question related and I, I think I've talked to you about it before. I found on the profile, like I'm part of the Alaska group and I see the members. Is that the most current list and will it automatically update when people pay? That's a good question that I don't know the answer to. I don't either. I know I had to have, because we registered through the national website and I had to have um, Shelly get us a list, which she is currently working on. I think she's a little bit overwhelmed right now. <laughs> okay. We are, we're doing nominations for officers and some are getting nominated that aren't showing on my list. And so I'm kind of, so I wonder if there's a person other than you guys that I could ask if there's an easier way. So, we can reach out to Shelly um, and see, because that would be who it is, who you would need to talk to. The one thing that we've had happen in our state, which may be why people aren't showing up, is that um, if they've done auto renew, um, it may not process until the 30th. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I found the list and it, it's showing some news. So maybe it is current. I don't, I just don't know. That could be really handy. If, <laughs> if that's how it worked. Yeah. <laughs> that would be marvelous. Well, and my so you, question is similar. I usually send in one list. And so this will be the first time I send it to you, Megan. Is there a way to compare your list to our list? Just because for some reason this year, we've had a lot of people. We don't ask them to go on and pay online. We ask them to pay us. And then we send one lump check. And a lot of them have actually paid online this year. So I want to verify that. We've caught all the ones that may have paid online, but didn't pay or sign up with our state, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, Shelly can send you a list like she's sending our state a list. Um, let me drop her. Is it, Megan, is it okay to drop her email in the, okay. Yeah, absolutely. If you guys need um, to know where you're at with your membership, for sure, we're happy to help with that. It seems so like some of the lifetime memberships don't show up on the list i've noticed Ew. on the online list you mean yes and i almost wonder if they're not removed because some of the people on our list i don't know maybe it's just because they're waiting to but i doubt that some of the people on our list have renewed and so it could just be like anytime anybody signs up then they get put on that directory and not taken back off so I don't really trust the directory, but <laughs> um, that was my only resource at the time. So Kate and Claire, could you do me a favor, Kate or Claire, one or one or the other, could you send me a screenshot of what that looks like? Because I'm not even like sure. Yeah, I have it open now, so it. I can do that. Okay. Thank you. I wonder why this is so confusing. Is it the system? Is it the process? Or... From a national level? Or My, because every state can do it on their own? Yeah. Everybody does it a little bit differently. But also, I'm not sure Shelly got left a lot of 
instructions. <laughs> I think she's kind of figuring things out as she goes. And Shelly, for those that don't know, that's our um, association executive director. And right now, if you've been around for a minute, she has been, um, we lost our associate director back right before national conference last year, and they still haven't filled that position from the management company yet. So Shelly's working hard uh, kind of as the lone ranger for all of us collectively, in addition to all of the membership things, plus her usual responsibilities too. I was also confused in the email. You have that spreadsheet attached to us for us to send it. And so like in Alaska, everybody just goes through the website. And so I'm like, well, I don't really know how to get that. Unless yeah, the, the spreadsheet is helpful for me, um, which is a great point that if you have um, new officers or rolling officers I'm working off of last year's lists and previous year's lists for states that I haven't heard from. So if you know that I'm not, you're not getting emails directly from me or from Marlena, um, that was a method to say, Hey, help us out. Tell us who we need to be sending them to. And if you're the same people, that's fine. Um, cause we're in the same boat. We don't know who you've elected and who's no longer with extension and who's no longer serving in leadership roles. So this is the spreadsheet just for officers then? Um, ordinarily, that if your state, like Claire had said, if your state pays by one check for the entire state and they send their individual membership dues to Claire as the treasurer, then she is maintaining a list of everyone that also has to accompany the check to the National Association. So I'm just asking, copy me on it and I'll update my records, if that makes sense. Okay, so for Alaska, if I don't have that, I'll just send you the officers and that. That'd be great. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Don't put more work on anybody. Just, yeah, let me know if you, when you have officers that change over. Yeah, the... I think that credit card option is wonderful, but it, it does make it hard from a tracking standpoint. Because how do you keep up with who's paid and who hasn't paid? And that's a good question. And you know, the other thing I just thought of too, because in if you're not familiar with that social link, which is uh, the back piece of our website, essentially. So you have a username and a login, and then you can join different um groups or you can join different working groups or even your state is a group and if that gets updated automatically like as the payment rolls through and processes that's is that the way you would find that out i guess that's a good question i'll ask shelly that as i'm emailing her about the other thing and maybe i'll just copy you guys on it and see oh that'd be great because that would be handy for other states because i know you're not alone and taking that credit card payment but it does get quite tricky. Hey, so speaking of encouraging members to update their profile, that's on that social link component. And that's uh, the way that if folks want to sign up for working groups, or if they want to, um, so many options in working groups, or if they want to receive notifications about certain things, that's the way to do that. Also, I think that's where we put like our name and our address and that kind of an email so that when they send out those, you know, the pulse and some of the other news that's been rolling through, that's also how we do that. So NAE 4HYDP dot. Well, I don't know. It just shows up sometimes. <laughs> so up here you can do sign in, but there's ways that you guys can communicate in there if you wanted to do so. But generally people just go in and update their profile stuff. That was down and dirty. Sorry. Was that helpful, Brandy or no? Yeah, no, that, that was, thank you. What happened to the revamping of it? I thought it was going to be something. Yeah. Still the works. Yep. Still, still, whoops, still working on it. 
So I do have a question as we're talking about membership and stuff. We're having a statewide meeting next week, so our association stuff will get all, well, nearing finalizing. But um, we have a bunch of new staff, and um, I've been around forever. So what are some things that I can say to in to say what the benefit of the association is because they're feeling like um, it's not a benefit. We had Megan and Marlena come on a Zoom with our, like all of our Alaska 4-H staff and faculty and just talk for like 20 minutes. And I think that was really helpful. And I had some feedback afterward that from some new staff that it was really helpful for understanding what the association is. Yeah, I mentioned that too. I, next week is a training, so it doesn't fit into our agenda, but I'll probably do that. But if there's just some little sound bites, I because we're opening up the training with an update on the association. So, on that same website, Sarah is um, a document that, um, and it's oh okay, wonderful that talks about all of the opportunities. But I know that's been even in Wyoming that has come up this year is what is the benefit to me of joining this? Um, and why, why bother? Um, we're in a state we're unique too. not to trample on Emily Haver because she's our officer. So her and Sarah, so they can shut me up, but we're in a state where we don't have a lot of tenure and promotion opportunities. And so we don't have the need to be, award winners are published or some of those things don't apply to us. Um, and so it is a hard sell if you're in that state. I think if you have a state where that's your, your mechanism, I think that's very helpful. If this is catered to those folks. What are things that you guys tell your states? I just, I'm going to piggyback on Megan. Of, um, <clears throat> and I could be wrong, even though I am the vice president still learning. So in, in our state, a lot of, our professional development comes from our association. It doesn't come from the university. It doesn't um, come, well, I don't know where else it would come from. It comes from us who are part of the association. Like we get together and we um, plan it and find speakers. And and so like, if you're not part of that association, one, I think you're missing out on being a team player as a state. Um, but two, you're missing out on some great networking and professional development opportunities. The networking, I think, was a big sell from when Megan and Marlena were talking. Yeah, it's, I mean, Nevada's the same as Wyoming, is that um, the bulk of the, the, well, the overwhelming majority of the people that would be in the association are not on a tenure and promotion. Um, so those things, you know, those things don't, being accepted as a presenter and stuff doesn't, um, doesn't matter to them. So, um, you know, and I did talk about professional development and that we, you know, we, the state of Nevada will do that as well. But what if they, if they become, and just letting them know that if they sign up to be on any of those working groups, how they, you know, can just accelerate their exposure to their own personal opportunities to, you know, in terms of being invited to present at a, any of the PYD academies and, um, you know, and the like, but so your suggestions are helpful. I just need to, you know, be mindful of that. And the same thing is like, why would I spend that kind of money? And then like, then turn around and spend state association dues. Um, and what, it, you know, what's in it for me kind of thing. So. The thing I can tell you too, Sarah, that probably escaped me until very recently, um, I'll be honest, I didn't realize when I was was a state officer, the amount of time that I spent kind of serving as the voice of the 4-H professionals in our state. Mm -hmm. That was a huge, uh, probably a larger part of my job than the actual like presidential duties, convening meetings and that kind of stuff is I got to sit with administration and, and have pretty um, real discussions about morale and what we like and what we don't like. And that was a huge component. And I didn't really pick up on that until last year that our national association actually sits at the table with um, national 4-H council and our, um, who's our um, nonprofit partner, but then also 
um, like the NIFA staff as well. And our um, president and, and our president's council for our national association takes what we say and, and really they strive to represent those of us in the States. Um, probably my own opinion that I can elaborate on, but will not in this forum. But I think sometimes national 4-H council gets ahead of themselves a little bit and some of where they try to take the 4-H program or influence the 4-H program. And I can say in recent years, our president's council has provided a little bit of pushback and um, perhaps some appreciation about where the 4-H is actually at. Well, and I think also too, um, because, you know, I've been in, I, I've been in extension for a very long time. So it's, so you see the cycles and you see all of that going around. And now that we, now that NIFA is standing up um, the 4 h development program and we have a, a head clover again, I think that helped because I think, I don't know that council did it intentionally, but it was easy to be the voice of all 4-H when there was no other voice. And even just trying to find some of those old NIFA documents that say how 4-H is, you know, how our, our county programs or our state programs are a part of um, this overall bigger thing. It's just, it's been kind of frustrating to try to find those documents again. And maybe folks see that, and maybe you guys have experience with that at your state levels too. And, you know, one of the, pro I'm picking on Sarah because that's what I know, but Sarah has launched into this whole, um, what do we want at state fair mm -hmm. kind of discussion because our state fair um, runs a little differently and all of Wyoming 4-H educators are expected to go and do there and do the work. Um, and Sarah's really been leading a charge to have that conversation with administration and with our um, state fair board. And that's beyond you know, Megan is a county 4-H agent. That's not my, you know, I, I can't represent the entire state on these matters. And so I think that voting voice in your state association, I think is kind of critical because, and maybe, you know, in my own thoughts, I real like my battle was really silly. It was saving our benefits, but uh, people didn't always know that I was kind of working our state legislature to make sure that our benefits would be covered by the university and that our, you know, salary agreements would stay in place and we wouldn't be bumped down to part-time. Um, and I think for new folks, they probably don't even, they probably just blink and go, what? That's not, <laughs> they don't realize that we really rally in our States too. Any other ideas or things folks want to share on that? It's a good question. I guess just really quickly, we don't, we're not do here for tenure either, but I personally feel like the awards and the officer role look good on a resume anyway, even if, you know, even if it's not for movement up <laughs> in my current position. So that could be a. Yeah. And so, and those of us in this position, we don't, you know, we'll never, we don't have a ladder to climb. Right. And so when you're look, ready for a new challenge or you're ready for something different and new, I think the, your association is a good place to go to, to get some of those different opportunities too. Well, here in Utah, you know, it's really an echo of what everyone else has been saying, but just promoting that um, camaraderie amongst all of our colleagues, whether they're staff assistants, coordinators, faculty um, within our association, and we just bring everyone together. And it's like, no one is better than anyone else. We're all equal. We just have a different role to play within um, our um, extension system here in Utah. And we um, introduce state awards since not everyone necessarily does national stuff. And we keep growing and expanding those just to let everyone know that all of the work that they do is important and it has significance and meaning. And we want them to be recognized and um, like we even get on Canva and we create a birthday card for all of our members and send it out to them when it's their birthday and put it on our website, just showing that we're there for them and we're thinking of them and that we're easily accessible to just help grow our program and our 
just make it stronger and better. I love that. Thank you for sharing that, Nicole. I look at it too. There's only like in the state of Wyoming, there's only like 30 other people who kind of know what my day-to-day life looks like. And we get each other. And so I feel generally usually very comfortable saying, oh yeah, our association probably needs to take a stand on this. And I trust them to represent me because they live my life also. And it's a different conversation from the association to our state 4-H program leader who has a you know, does not live in my world as much as he wants to believe he does sometimes. He's a member of our association. However, his job is very different than mine. And like you said, Nicole, it's how it's designed to be. That's what it's supposed to be. But I appreciate that our association still gives us a voice. Okay, Marlena, do you want to talk about the JSEP ELC? Sure. Um, If you... If nobody has from your state has let me know who is going to be your representative um, to JSEP ELC, please let me know. Um, and if I can tell you who the list is, if you have questions. Um, and if you are going to JSEP ELC, um, be sure to look over all the instructions in the documents I've sent out and um the thing that keeps being driven home to us is uh, make sure you get itemized receipts for your food. Um, so it has to say exactly what you got, that you got a Diet Coke and a cheeseburger, you know, itemized. And don't put your alcohol on that same receipt. <laughs> so those are the big ones. We are planning, for those attending, we are planning um, association night out on Wednesday night. And that's the first, that's the night, right? Cause Tuesday's the travel day. Wednesday, we're in the conference Wednesday night. We're having association night out. And then we have conference on Thursday and are released on Thursday night. So don't make big plans. Come, come out to eat with us. My understanding Marlena from that last call last week is that, um, essentially if you come with us, we're, we're picking up your meal, whether from um, your reimbursement process for those state sponsored folks or delegates from our national association. And if you're not that person, if you're coming to represent your state just on your own, uh, our regional hospitality accounts are going to cover your meal. Yep. So that's- save the date, come have supper with us. Yeah. And we don't know where that's going to be yet, do we? Um, I checked out a menu for, a, um, and I think that's the direction we're headed and it is an Italian. I can tell okay. you, um, it's a 15 minute walk from our location. And the last email that I responded to and talked about was that I appreciated family style. So it looked like we were going to get a whole lot of little things to pick and choose at, which I always appreciate. Cool. Sounds and great. It came with, and it came with dessert, which was also more important to me than anything. So does everybody know who their state person is? Or if your state person is attending and you've told Marlena that? Could, Marlena, could you drop the states you do have in chat so we can just double check with our folks? Um, I It's probably easier for me to just read it because I've got it on a uh, Google Sheet. So I have from Alaska, Jasmine Shaw, um, from Wyoming, Stacy Buckles. Is that correct, Megan? Did you nod? Sorry, I was looking. Uh, I was nodding. Okay. I was nodding and looking down at the same time. Yes. Tiana, I know. Um, Teresa Tiverti from Idaho. And... Savannah Graves from New Mexico. Brandy is going. And Ben Hoptman from Montana. That's the only ones I know of. Ben Hoptman. Okay. Thanks. So you don't have someone committed from Arizona yet? Uh, you, oh, I do. Sorry. Yes. Where? Uh, it's Amy Parrott, isn't it? 
That's what I had heard, yeah. Yes. Yep. Marlena, I will be attending for Oregon. The okay. Got it. Anybody I just, else? I just put in the chat, Hawaii, we're not having much luck, but I have one more person to ask, so I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Okay. The block, um, the hotel block is full, um, but what I got from Casey yesterday is that we will reimburse up to what the room rate would have been for um, du double occupancy, so they can stay wherever they like, and then we'll re reimburse them that 60 for whatever per night. Um for wherever. Yeah. Okay. I'll let him know. Thank you. One of the things, Marlena, I think you're on that team too. Um, there's some association time that happens during the JSEP ELC conference. Yes. Um, I completely I was, forgot. I was hope I don't recall enough about it. I was hoping you could give us a preview of what we'll be doing in our time together. Yes, absolutely. So um, we're really going to be talking about the PRKC and how you can kind of do an evaluation, self-evaluation. We've probably all done it before, um, but then take a look at what you can be doing um, personally to kind of improve those competencies that you feel you might be a little bit weak in. Um, I think we're going to do some networking around that and kind of, you know, sharing um because we always hear that, that people really enjoy the networking opportunities. Um, so we want to make sure that you're able to talk to um, other 4-H professionals from other states. And um, then we're going to be uh, kind of gathering some resources as well. Um, the Teaching and Learning Work Group and the PLWG Professional Development Work Group are working together um, to start gathering resources for a website where you will be able to go and um, be like, you know what, I really need some um, equity, inclusion, and belonging work. Like that's something I need to work on. So you can go to this website and, um, or will be able to once we have it done, um, and be like, okay, here are some great resources to help me build those competencies. But what we're working on right now is to gather those resources. So um, we'll be uh, talking a little bit more about that and then sending home um, some business cards with an opportunity for you to share great resources that you found um, as well. So that's wonderful. Thank you. You're that's, welcome. That's on that first day, right? Is like part I believe one. so. Yep. That'll be great. If uh, for those that are not going to the JSEP ELC conference, the oh shoot, I lost my own date. Goodness gracious, February second, we're having a virtual um, association leadership session, um, and so that's for all of you and others in your state who are in leadership positions. That one is on Zoom. It should only take an hour, um, and it really is a lot more. Um, opportunity to break into discussion groups. And so we have four topics on working groups from the National Association, professional development opportunities, both nationally as a conversation, but also how uh, you guys provide professional development to your states, uh, how you engage your membership and things that you do as a state association also as a conversation. And I think Jesse and I had a long conversation about this was officer succession planning. Um, so many of us find ourselves in leadership positions in our state associations and don't have the tools or the resources or the information that we need to be successful in that. Um, and so just a really frank conversation about how can we do that and how can we, you know, leave our legacy for those that follow after us because none of this despite what jesse will tell you none of us are actually supposed to be officers for our entire life we're supposed to move on at some point <laughs> uh right claire right right and that includes being a regional director for communications which my term in that role will end this fall. And we're always looking for folks who want to have fun communicating with our regional directors. So if that's you or you're interested, I'll, I'll be happy to have a conversation with you. Um, this side of it so far has been far more into my bailiwick and my 
personal interests than anything ever did with the finance side of life. So I'm just saying, if you like to communicate, uh, this is a good opportunity to get you out of your state association stuff, um, but also allows you to continue to grow in your own career and gain your new skills. That's my plug, but join us on February 2nd. I think I sent you guys all the link. Um, if you met, the regional directors took a hold of Facebook last week. And um, I think on that, uh, so it's National Association of Extension 4-H Youth Development Professionals. If you're on Facebook, just type that in your search bar. And in that post, it says, contact your regional directors for the link. And I think I sent that all to you. And you'll probably get it a couple more times before we go there. But that's a great opportunity for those that can't travel to Kansas City. It's just a great refresher if you like new ideas and to share ideas as well. I have a question. Um, is that virtual event, would that be one that, that we should like involve our awards committee chairman or our parliamentarian um, and go beyond just our president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, our, our basic leadership? I would say absolutely. But you know better how your state association works. If you force, I, yeah, you know, your state association, if you see these folks as um, ready, you know, ready to, if they're the awards person and you think maybe they'll be ready to be vice president someday, or just at least engage them in, in a broader conversation as well. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. That if you have people that may move up to a position Send them. Awesome. Thanks. Sarah, what do you want to know how to do? How not to be a state officer for the rest of my life. <laughs> it's trying to encourage other people to take on. I think they just think it's so overwhelming. And, you know, because um, I've been the state president for a very long time. <laughs> You know how I solved that, Sarah, in my personal world, because I was also state president for about six years, three terms. And you know how I solved it <laughs> was I became a regional director. Yeah, I just was going to say, yeah, the next step. <laughs> yeah, or the other, the flip side of it is uh, you make it look very easy. And that's why they. I, I told them how easy it is. But yes. Yes. <laughs> I had hoped, speaking of awards, I had hoped that our um, regional awards person was able to hop on, but I bet she's my neighbor, and I think that she got bogged down in, in the next county over. I think she has the same snow problem I do. So um, I have not seen, I'm not the awards person, so have those of you who do those awards things, have you gotten any communication yet from the national awards chair yet? Yes, I, I got something that asking if I would still be willing to review uh, proposals. So, um, so yes, I did receive something recently. I presume, not to put you on the spot, Sarah, but I presume all the dates are pretty similar to what they always are. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And nothing will come out till after. I mean, they'll be launching out the new dates as soon as the membership drive is done the end of the month. But they just did this. I think they're doing is like in order to apply for awards, you have to be a member. <laughs> so, yes, yes, and to my, the best of my knowledge, there are no new awards this year. I know we had some last year, but this year I don't believe that that's a, the case. Does anybody have? I'm not an expert. Maybe Marlena is. She's a big award winner. Does anybody have any questions about the awards process? That's very nice of you. I am not an expert, though. <laughs> Sarah, write that down on your list of benefits, too. One of the things that I like to do um, as an association member is, one, I like to review awards mm -hmm. for new ideas. Two, I like to review conference proposals to gain new ideas as well. So if you have folks that are always looking for new ideas, 
um, that's a really good way to do that. And the only way to do that is to be in the association. Thank you. Those are my all the topics. Yes, Nicole, I will send out that link again. Those are all of my topics. What things do you guys have? What else do you need help with doing? I just want to real quick for Sarah, second, what Megan said about being in the association and being able to review things like as a newish, well, when I was new and then as a still newish educator, like that was amazing. If you think that it doesn't serve you at all to review other people's work, then you don't know how to do your job because a 4-H is just all about working with and seeing what other people are doing and adapting it to you. And because we all have the same mission um, and it was just really cool to get to know my colleagues in my own state and other states through their work. And it made my work better. So our ideas come a lot from each other and we replicate each other's stuff, but it is you guys in other states blow my mind because you're new and you're different and you have other ways of doing things. And I like to learn those things myself. And I think that stuff happens, you know, we just had this conversation last week. The association is, um, you know, I don't know that um, you come to, you sign up to be the new 4-H educator in your county. And I don't know that they put you through a rigorous training process. And I think the association fills that gap a bit. Yeah, I think they do. And I don't remember who said uh, someone here and i'm sorry i can't remember who said it but now because i don't i just see names um is is that our association can be the professional development arm of 4-h um youth development and and that's what we're we're taking on a larger role we have a we have, we have a program our program leader and then we have two regional um members of that leadership team so we have Carrie Stark as our program leader, myself as Northern Nevada, and Nora Luna as Southern Nevada. We make up that leadership team to um, do that um, onboarding and that ongoing professional development, but just coalescing this large group of brand new people to, um, you know, to, to 4-H and the, the world of 4-H youth development. So it's been... I mean, it's just overwhelming the number of new people we have and just um, getting them on board with what 4-H um, positive youth development is all about. I know you guys are all mentioning lifers as far as voluntold kind of things, but we actually have assigned a role to our past president. So as they're outgoing, they actually solicit the um, incumbents so that we at least have a slate of officers for our next meeting. It. It obviously takes a while, but it's much easier than the awkward silence at meetings where nobody really says anything. And so that person gets elected again. Um, but we do meet as a executive board before our election meeting with the membership and really try to talk and plan and, and talk with folks. And it gives them time to ask questions and think about it as well. But that's really been helpful for us. We also do that in Colorado. Um, and then when the president moves to a different role, the past president gets to stay on for another year. Hey, that's me. Yeah. So getting being a regional director did not work for me, Megan. But Tiana's pretty awesome too. So she's our new president. I mean, I'm still the past president. They don't you they don't need new ideas about how to pick on their past president in Wyoming. So Sarah never So you're not gonna that. bring that one up. Yes. Yeah, it does work well in Colorado did. too though. That's good. I mean, because I a lot of that succession planning stuff, too, is partially the people who have the knowledge aren't, you know, they leave extension, too. I mean, nobody's immune to leaving their position. And you don't I think as, as all of us know, when you leave your you leave your position, you take all kinds of knowledge with you that you didn't that you've thought probably yourself, like I laid this out as simple as can be. It's not. And then you find out, Oh, it wasn't quite as simple as people thought it was to me. Cause that's how things work. But also too, I find, I mean, picking on my own experience when I knew it was time to not be president anymore. I had Sarah won't, ever admit it but sarah in wyoming i trained her up for a solid two years and i just included her in emails and discussions and i'm sure she thought well that's nice of megan and it was all just 
a secret plan so that she knew how to do what was needed done. Okay, what else do you guys have? Right now, the big push is membership. Um, membership, membership, JSEP, ELC. Do you guys, PILD would be the next big conference coming up. Hopefully you got the word. Um, one of the conversations that has sprung out of these meetings um, from regional directors was that folks didn't understand why the, our national association would only cover a partial cost of registration for PILD. So in 2023, our National Association will cover the entire cost of registration for one person from every state to attend the PILD conference. And that happens in Arlington, Washington. I'm just Crystal naming names. City, Virginia. Thank you. Thank you. So the, there's the next conference for professional development to look forward to. Um, and so again, every... Um, Every state in our country will have the opportunity to send one delegate on on that registration scholarship. So something else so to plan is my, ahead for. This is my sneaky, tricky thing too. Um, I was supposed to go to PILD again in 2020, um, and I they did not have a penalty for not staying in the conference hotel. So a colleague from Colorado and I had gotten an Airbnb. So you might check that um, since it's not a full registration thing that NA 4 hydp pays for, you know, hotel isn't included. You might check that. It does lower the price significantly. You know what else, Mar I'm putting Marlena back on the spot. One of the conversations, first of all, let me just roll back and tell you guys our regional auction at our, our national meeting. Our regional auction is too successful almost like we're borderline too successful and so now our uh, western region hospitality account is abundant and wonderful like more it's m like so many stickers could come out of that account one of the things that marlena and i have kind of um, talked about in quick passing is ideas on how to spend that money because we're not obviously um we probably need to spend our money on our membership in the Western region. And you just made me think of, because you know, as a possibility that I would throw out is, does our hospitality account encourage po folks to go to PILD if there were money available to help them? Cause that's so expensive of a conference. I understand. And it, I know what it's like to travel out of Wyoming. It's just darn expensive. So that is an idea for the people to discuss. Not the only idea, but something for you guys to noodle on is what What does the Western region need to do with $25,000? Do you know how many members are in the region, like ballpark? Not yeah. without checking. The last time, so right now, of course, with the membership drive happening, uh, no, I, I can honestly say no. Um, the last time we looked, we were not, we were like just over a thousand. I was thinking like some swag that is like West is best and has the, <laughs> that we're all like regionally connected, <laughs> maybe a beanie. <laughs> Those folks in Idaho that I understand, they put that logo on the, uh, a gift that they were giving someone. They used the West is best logo. I don't, I, was it a jacket, Claire? What was yeah, because um, we had the same thing happen here, and our president had to stay an extra year. So um, Carrie, who's on here, got a jacket this last year for her second round as a president's gift. That's wonderful. Yeah, I don't know I what think, folks like. Sorry, Megan. <laughs> no, you go for it. <laughs> I was going to say, I think Swag would be cool with that West's Best logo. And I also really like the idea uh, if it is a possibility to help people go to PILD, because um, I know as president for my state association, there's all these wonderful conferences I'd love to go to, but my county budget is um, limited. And then we try and spread the the love for everyone to go because it's usually president, vice president that get to go and we're letting our uh, secretary treasurer 
attend because it's not normally in it for them. So I, I like both those ideas. Got that, Marlena? Yes. Because I think it's wonderful. I, I, I know that we're the envy of all the other regions for sure with our auction. So what I don't know, Megan, is what is our process? And we can maybe talk about this later since we're getting to the end of our hour. But um, what is our process for adopting whatever procedure we decide on? Whatever we choose it to be. Um, okay. So pick oh, picking on Idaho, um, we had Idaho, when they were hosting national conference, we had just decided at this meeting that we would offer them um, funding from our hospitality account to host that meeting. And we just kind of took an informal casual vote here among the, this group of, of individuals. So if you guys feel like we need to have like a more formal process, I would not be unsupportive of that either. I think it's whatever you guys do. I mean, we're collectively the, the holders of that, that money. I think that sounds good. Um, maybe we can put it on the next agenda along with the ideas that people had. So we had swag and then um, offering help on PD. If you have maybe specific, like if we should offer a $200 scholarship per state for PILD or some specific way that you think we should help, um, if you could put that in writing and email it to Megan and I, I think that would be helpful. Or maybe we need to have like the actual hospitality suite at a conference I that, like we it. All, uh, yes. that we all can go visit occasionally and yeah, absolutely pick up some pretzels or something. I thought about that or last something. year or something. I thought about that last year and didn't get after that in time to wrap my arms around it. Cause I think that would be a perfect place, um, you know, to camp out at the conference location and take a break. If you needed to just relax or get something out of the room. You can have the podcast playing in the background all the time. All the time. Yeah. Just on loop. Just on yes. loop. We could just set Scott Nash there and he can just hold court and have conversations endlessly. I like it. Well, thank you guys. Congratulations to you guys um, for being state officers. And thank you. Um, Please know that we do value what you do, the work that you do. Um, and I know your states do too. So thanks for hanging in with us this hour. Feel free to contact us if you need anything 